Good morning, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. At this time, we ask if you would please take a moment to silence your phones. Our presider this morning is Father Cecil Critch. Our opening hymn is found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 583, as we gather at the table, 583. Please stand. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. And thank you for your patience as we try to work out these heating problems here, now, if we ever get that done. <laughs> to prepare us ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts to forgive us for the times we have failed to be merciful to others. We have failed to be the healing touch of Christ to others. We ask the Lord's forgiveness. God of mercy on us, forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days the Philistines mustered for war against Israel, and Israel went out to battle against them. 
They encamped at Ebenezer, and the Philistines encamped at Aphek. The Philistines drew up in line against Israel, and when the battle was joined, Israel defeated, was defeated by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men on the field of battle. When the troops came to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord put us to rout today before the Philistines? Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord here from Shiloh, so that he may come among us and save us from the power of our enemies. So the people went to Shiloh and brought from there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. The two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. When the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel gave a mighty shout so that the earth resounded. When the Philistines heard the noise of the shouting, they said, What does this great shouting in the camp of the Hebrews mean? When they learned that the Ark of the Lord had come to the camp, the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God has come into the camp. They also said, Woe to us, for nothing like this has happened before. Woe to us, who can deliver us from the power of these mighty gods? These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with every sort of plague in the wilderness. Take courage and be men, O Philistines, in order not to become slaves to the Hebrews as they have been to you. Be men and fight. So the Philistines fought. Israel was defeated, and they fled, everyone to his home. There was a very great slaughter, for there fell of the Israel 30,000 foot shoulders. The ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, died. The word of the Lord. The response to Psalm 16, protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Thank you. 
Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. A man with leprosy came to Jesus begging him, and he, kneeling, the man said to Jesus, If you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone. But go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded, as a testimony to them. But the man went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country, and people came to him from every quarter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Today in our scripture readings, we have two different experiences of God's presence. In the first reading, the Jewish people, in spite of the presence of the Ark of the Covenant, which was the mercy seat and symbol of the presence of God for them, they felt God's absence in their defeat by the Philistines. In the gospel, a leper experiences the healing presence of God and the healing touch of Jesus. A leper in the time of Jesus was someone who lived in places where nobody lived. Lepers lived outside the community with only each other for company, isolated from family and friends forever. For a leper to approach Jesus for healing was a daring thing to do. He was doing something that was forbidden by law. He wasn't allowed even to pretty well talk to anyone or to meet anyone. Lepers were the untouchables of that day. Most people would have run from an approaching leper. However, Jesus was different. He stood his ground and healed the leper. We see that his heart was moved with pity at the sight of the leper. Jesus saw the pain and suffering of the leper, who endured that from the disease and from the suffering he endured from being isolated and separated from the community. Often in the gospel, Jesus heals people by means of his word. And in healing the leper, Jesus goes further. He actually touches him, which was not allowed at all. The leper is made clean and can be restored to the community of Israel. The leper and Jesus have something in common. They both experienced, they were both prepared to break with strongly enforced rules and conventions in the search for healing and a fuller life. The leper didn't doubt Jesus' power to heal him, but he doubted Jesus' desire to heal him. If you want to, you can cure me. By touching the leper, Jesus released the leper from his isolation even before he spoke his healing word because he touched him. There is no situation in our lives, no condition or circumstance that need to be a barrier to the Lord's healing and life-giving presence to us. Jesus wants us all to have life and to have it to the full. All he needs from us is something of the desire and the will of the leper in approaching him. If we come before the Lord today in trusting faith, Nothing in our lives need come between us and the Lord's healing presence. According to the Gospel reading, because the leper started talking about his healing freely and everywhere, Jesus himself became like a leper and had to stay in places where nobody lived himself. In other words, as a result of the healing of the leper, Jesus went on to experience that isolation of the leper. Jesus gave life to others at great cost to himself. So as I said, there are two very different experiences of God in today's reading. The experience of God's absence in the first reading and the healing presence of God through Jesus in the second reading. Both experiences are part of our journey of faith. Sometimes we feel that God is present to us, healing us, and sometimes we feel that God is absent. And there are times when we'll ask, why is God absent? There are other times when we sense that healing touch of the Lord Jesus. 
If we remain faithful to the Lord in the dark times, we will surely come to experience the Lord's healing touch in our own lives. Our prayers of intercession today for our Holy Father, Pope Francis and Peter, our Archbishop, and for all those who lead and shepherd our church, we pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving to God for all of our volunteers, all those who help us in many ways in our parish here today, in parishes in our diocese and around the world, all those who take leadership roles in our parish in many, many different ways, in thanksgiving to God for their gifts and talents, we pray to the Lord. Let us also pray today for peace in our world, especially in Israel, in Sudan, in places like Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. For the healing power of the Holy Spirit upon all our sick, for Max Collett, Sister Margie Taylor, Father John Aaron, Christopher Anthony, Faith Nuna, Frank Holden, and Chelsea Coombs, and all those who have requested our prayer of healing, that the healing touch of the Lord Jesus may be upon them, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially today, we pray for Jita Randall and Rick Penny, Brendan Dutton and Jordan Natterer. For all those who have died in the peace of the Lord Jesus, we pray. For your own intention today. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day. And we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. O God, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest a resurrection, and so with all the angels and saints, we sing, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share the peace of Christ now with one another. With you. of the world of mercy. 
the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is found in Celebrate in Song, number 6.6, One Love Released, 6.6. One bread, one body, one cup, one call, one faith, one spirit present in us all, one prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace. One church, one people, one love released. One bread, one body, one cup, one call, one faith, one spirit present in One prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace, one church, one people, one love released. Is not this bread we share the body of our One bread, one body, one cup, one call, one faith, one spirit present in us all, one prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace. One church, one people, one love released. I am the bread of life, eat and you shall live. To those who share this meal, my strength I'll always give. One bread, one body, one cup, one call, one faith, one spirit present in us all, one prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace. One people, one love released. 
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a good day. And you too, Father. Our missioning hymn is found in the Catholic Book of Worship 535. Now thank we all our God, number 535. Shut